Good evening, friends. Hello and welcome to Live Irish Myths. This is episode number 103. I'm Anthony Murphy. Tonight, uh, apparently much requested uh, subject, uh, my photography. There is a little bit of an issue, and that is that it's still quite bright here. So it, it means that the images are not perhaps as vibrantly uh, visible. The definition as good as isn't as good as it could be. Um, it's sunny out and uh, I've tried to eliminate the light as much as possible and it's still quite bright. This is the sort of thing that is best uh, utilised in a dark room. I do apologise for that. But anyway, uh, by the time we get through the, the usual hellos and by the time I talk about equipment, because I do, do, do intend to just uh, briefly talk about equipment, then we can get on to describing the photographs. Hopefully it'll be a little bit duller and you'll be able to see them a little bit better. Anyway, good evening to you all. Uh, you're welcome along to Chok uh, in this evening and on YouTube. The first of the commenters tonight is Flower Child, who says hello or fault you from sunny and hot Las Vegas. Thank you, Anthony. Take care, everyone. Same back to you, Flower Child. Daisy Peters says, Gia Gwich, Anthony and everyone. Kate Miela fault you, my dearest two of the Mythflix. That's my pleasure, is participating in our chat. Thanks always for that. You're very welcome, Daisy. Welcome to the show. Archaeoastronomy Database says, greetings, my friends. Yes, indeed. Hello to you. Mandy McCurl says, hello, everyone. Uh, it, raining and no wind and the midges are out in force tonight. John Main says, Gurumahagat Anthony a boechus shin dutch le cupla mi anus vi shid simul agus uja kashul. Thank you, John, for your nice comments. And yes, of course, this is the last of the daily Live Irish Myths, we're going probably weekly after this. Got to get back to doing writing and editing and other things. Natasha Leaf says, Kia Ora, good morning from New Zealand. Falcha, Natasha, you're very welcome along. Erica Bow says, Trinona Watt to all. Hello, Erica, welcome along. Mez Marion says, hello, Anthony, Flower Child, Daisy, etc., etc. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, Jackie Stevenson says, hello, Anthony and the lovely two. I'm looking forward to your amazing photography. Well, it's maybe, as I say, a lot of these will be visible on the website, um, mythicalireland.com. So if you can't see them now, you can have a look at them later. Uh, George Dulla says, I'm back in Pennsylvania. Hello, George. Good evening to you. And Marty says, his name is not Marty. Evening from James in Northern Ireland. Just got ticket on Thursday, waiting patiently on my QRZ. Okay, right. Uh, good stuff. That's your uh, ham radio call. Uh, hunting rats. Good morning. Right. Some uh, folks. Oh, my goodness me. Pat Rowan is the first of tonight's watchers on Facebook, apparently. Jules Cousins says, hello, hello, Pat and Jules. Red Moonhead says, 103. Wowzers. Yeah, I know. It's been a uh, internet. 103. One, one day after the other. No breaks. Barbara Barney says, hi, Anthony Giagic. Angel Barboni Smith says, hello, Giagic. Jim Conway says, it's windy in Lurgan in Armagh. Hello, Jim. Lillian Cruz says, cheers from Rio de Janeiro, Falche. J. Marie Todd says, good evening, Falche. Paul Campbell says, the 103rd episode in a row since the eve of the lockdown in Ireland, the 12th of March, 2020. Yes, indeed. Imagine. That's more than three months. Yes, indeed it is. Nick Eska Casterton says, good evening, Anthony, and the awesome two of Falche, Nick. Theresa McGuinness says, hello, friends. Jigich, Theresa. Dawn Hilton says, good evening. Episode 103, Mythflix. Slauncha, uh, Dawn. Paula Snow Queen says, hello. Falcha. Paul Allborl says, hello from the Alabama Gulf Coast. Hello, Paul Falcha. Scott Taggart says, I'm eager to hear what you shoot with. And any tips and tricks? Yes, indeed. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Mike and Jeanette are in uh, from a hot New Jersey. Good afternoon to both of you. Julie King says, hi, Anthony Falcha. Alison Clipsham says, hello from Leicester, England. Happy 103. Hello, Alison, and thank you. Desiree Riley is watching. Hello, Desiree. All thanks to you that we're able to project the images and show them off. Brilliant stuff. Keith Carmody says, hello, Anthony and everyone. Hope you're all doing well. Doing great. Rowan Grove is watching. Jacinta McGee says, hello, everyone. Gia Gooch. Patricia McAteer is watching. Anne-Marie Leahy says, Michelle, hello. Tom King is watching. Jonathan Donald Boya McLean says, Evening, Falcha, Kristen Gray Taggart. Jérive to our awesome tour and our wonderful teacher, Anthony. It's a 100 degree plus day in Northern California, but I'm excited to be here today. Good stuff. Wow, it's hot. Janet Moran says, hello, Anthony, from sunny and warm Boston. Brilliant. 
Good evening, Janet. Good afternoon. Yvette Tillema says, yay, hi to uh, Hi, Anthony. Thanks so very much for all you've taught us. Ah, well, I'm l learning myself as we go along. I'm glad you're enjoying it, though. Rowan Grove. I am going to be sitting to one side. Don't worry, I'll let you get a full view of the photographs. Rowan Grove, just nipping in to say hello. I have a plumber in the house. Hopefully I'll be back or else I'll check in later. No problem at all, Rowan. Get it sorted. Danilo Paparello says, hi, Anthony. Good evening from Italy. Ciao, Danilo. Snapper Earl says, hello, Anthony and all. Thank you for the talks and especially the one today. No problem, Snapper. Glad to provide the uh, talks. Trina New York says, grand to catch up live with you again, finally. Hugs to all the two of. Thanks, Trina. Good to see you. Sandra Peterson says, good evening, Anthony and two. I hope you're all well, all doing good. Margaret Ring is in the house. Hello, Margaret. Excuse me. Sheila Albert says, hi, Anthony. So glad I can join you live today from Santa Rosa, California. Hello, Sheila. Good to see you. Susan Scott says, hello, hello to all the two from hot and sunny Connecticut. Hot and sunny seems to be the order of the day today all around. Alex Casterton says, evening, Anthony and two. I spent most of the day reading Mythical Ireland, New Light on the Ancient Past. Really shined a light on Ethane. Also, the screen is fine. Ah, good. Good. Cheryl Ann McFetridge says, cheers and love from Boston. I'm back to work, but still listening. Uh, hello, Cheryl Ann, or Ch is it Cher yes, Cher Cheryl Ann, my, my apologies. Uh, Kim Stewart says, hello, Anthony and everyone. I'm watching from Comox, Vancouver Island. Good evening, Kim. Folge. Freyas Joholm says, Banach the Anton August 2. What a treat. Thank you for sharing your beautiful photos. Very glad to do so. Ralph Waldron, I think you have done a beautiful, sorry, a brilliant job getting us through this COVID pandemic with a little help from Amargin Glungial. Yes, indeed, Ralph. Thanks and welcome along. Patricia McAteer says hello from Omeeds, Giaglitch. Mariana Dunn says greetings to our dear Tua and Anthony from Virginia with reams of gratitude. Thank you, Mariana. It's greatly appreciated. Doris O'Hara says hi, Anthony and everyone. Giaglitch. Tom King says hello there, Anthony and the mighty Tua. Looking forward to this great setup. <laughs> yeah, Slaunch it, Tom. Margaret Ring says, Good evening, Anthony, and all the lovely Tua. Banachti, Margaret, good to see you. As Selene says, Hello, Anthony from Mexico. Hello, Falls, you're welcome along. Alwyn Roy Badziak says, Hello, Anthony and Tua. Thank you, Alwyn Falls, you're welcome along. Christina Zaba says, Good evening, Anthony, and all the Tua from Bristol. Glad this is on. Thank you, Anthony. Glad you're enjoying it, Christina. Jennifer Fitzpatrick says, Hi from Lurgan, Falls, you, Jennifer. Charlene McLean Cosby says, beautiful day in North Carolina. Glad to hear it. Reasonably nice here. The sun is shining now. It's been dull on and off and a bit of rain today. Uh, quite windy, but we don't mind if it's bright and sunny. Sirene Kieran says, good day, everyone. Fall to Sirene. Megan Walter says, hi, everyone. Fall to Megan. Anne-Marie Leahy says, thanks for the last 103 episodes. So insightful. I wonder how long we can continue, even at one a week, you know. Hopefully there's enough material there to go for long distance into the future. Nora Gaffney O'Connor says, hello, Anthony and Tua. Sea was warm today. How mad was that? Thanks for everything, Anthony. I would not have managed through COVID without you all. Ah, good to hear it, Nora. And yeah, the sea, warm. Somebody must have turned on the immersion. Neil Hughes says, turn on off from Coatbridge, Scotland, raining because it's the last episodes. Tears of the Tua, Mary watching. Do it's not the last episode. It's the last daily episode. Yeah, I suppose it's probably. I know, I know. I feel it too. I I feel strange tonight about the whole thing. I do. I feel strange about the fact that it's going to be longer between episodes now. Anyway, they say absence makes the heart grow fonder. Hopefully, that will be the case. Anne McCallum says hello, Anthony and the Mighty Tua from yet another beautiful day in Windsor, Ontario. We may not be a Greek island, but we're on the same latitude as Rome. Wow. Good evening or good afternoon, Anne. Aidan Machanvayer says hello and good morning from Vancouver. Thanks for the efforts. Good morning. A is it Aidan or Aon? Uh, very nice to see you. Kelly Edmiston says happy 103 to uh, the and my beloved Tua. Hope we see you once a week on Facebook. Our captain, Anthony. <laughs> but, uh, I hope you will see us at least once a week. Kelly, don't forget, I will do my very best to, to do uh, uh, impromptu, unannounced live broadcasts from the monuments, of course. I'll, I'll do my best to keep that up. But thank you, Kelly. Pamela Walter says, Jiri from the Netherlands. Hello, Pamela. Yeah, Paul is talking about blinds for the Velux windows. Uh, yes, I know. It's only now that it's become an issue that, you know, uh, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Barbara Murphy says, hi, Anthony and the two are from Smoky Hot Tucson. I'm going to miss the daily interaction, but fully understand. And thank you all. Well, we're going to hopefully see you once a week at least, Barbara. So uh, don't be too despondent. Uh, and yes, 
there's plenty of material there. I mean, if you think that every episode has been at least an hour, uh, I'd say the episodes run to about an average of 70 minutes each. So if you multiply 70 by 100, my maths isn't all that good. That's 7, 70 by 100, 7,000 minutes, and divide that by 60. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's about 100 and probably about 120 hours. Let's call it 7,000, and let's divide it by, what did I say? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm just totally... You see me and maths? You would not want me doing your tax return for you. Tell you that for nothing. What did I say? 70 minutes. Let's call it 102 episodes. By 102 episodes is 7,140 minutes. And we're going to divide that by 60 to get the hours. 119 hours. There you go. Roughly speaking. Fernando Rivera says, hello from Puerto Rico. Falja Fernando. Rex Fortenberry says, Ian Thaka on show. Falja Rex. Good evening. Gillian Smith says, good evening from North Wales. Hello, Gillian. Good evening to you, Falja. You're welcome. Joe Butler says, hello from Colorado. So happy to be with Mr. Murphy and the Tua. We're glad to have you along, Joe. Martin Doheny says, hello, Anthony and all the Tua from a dull South Kilkenny. Really enjoyed all the episodes and the banter. Thank you again. We enjoyed having you along, Martin. J. Marie Todd says, I'm going to have to start from the first episode. <laughs> you have a lot of catching up to do, but you'll enjoy it, I hope. Jennifer Foley says, hello, everyone. Gia Gitch. Tom Lawler says, good evening, Anthony. Well done, County Tipperary. Hello, Tom. Hi, welcome along from County Tipperary to County Loud. Burr Whelan says, hi, Anthony and Tua from Dublin. Falcha, Burr. Jacinta Paisley says, hi, Anthony and all. Gia Gitch. Maria Rodriguez Doyle says, hello. Love from Spain. Falcha, Maria. Donna Jean Porter says, hi, Gia Gitch. Kristen Murray Andre says, hello, Anthony and the Tua from stormy Chicago. Ah, the Windy City lives up to its name. Hello, Kristen. Desiree Riley. Hello, Anthony and Tua. Thank you for reading to us and giving us all something to look forward to during the COVID lockdown. Tuning in the last 103 days have been lovely. It's 103 degrees in Louisiana for episode 103. Well, there you go. Sounds hot. Enjoy it. Paul Garron says, good evening, Anthony and all the Tua. End of one chapter. Lots more in the book. Absolutely, Paul. That's the way to look at it. Michelle Crowley says, Anne-Marie Leahy watching. Mm. Therese McGuinness wanted to ask uh, about another discussion about the site near Dundalk with the use of a projector. Looked around on Google Maps trying to understand the Neolithic site that may be under and near the golf course. A suggestion for some future time, perhaps. Yeah, there's nothing stopping us going back and covering old ground uh, with the aid of the projector because it will be different, you know. Uh, absolutely good, good, good suggestion, Theresa. Kirsten Salisbury is in the house. Hello, Kirsten Falcha. Peggy Thomas says hi from, is it Genesee, Idaho? Falcha, good evening. Good afternoon, Peggy. Todd Despera says hello, Anthony and Tua. I decided to work late to make up for the hour I'm taking to join. Brilliant, Todd. Fair play. Thank you. Uh, Chris, sorry. Karastiana Galloway says hello. Watching from California in the USA. Lots of Californians in the house. Hello and good evening. Pat, Pat Rowan says he's on the road. Love to all the tour and all the way back to you, Pat. Keep her between the ditches. Stay safe. Ken Williams is in the henge, according to Margaret Ring. Welcome, Ken. <laughs> Ken is not looking for tips from me. I can tell you that for nothing. It would be the other way around. Pat Patrick Ruddy says, good evening, Anthony, and everyone managed to make it on time, but may have to leave early. Good evening from Glasgow. Would you believe the sun has just come through a break in the clouds? Lovely. Nice one, Patrick. We'll catch you later on. Teresina Fitzpatrick says, beautiful is an understatement. Your work is incredible, Anthony. Thanks, Teresina. I'm blushing now. Gillian Gogarty is watching. Hello, Gillian. Gillian lives very close to me here, so is the closest of all the viewers. Brian Boylan says, hi from LA. Follow you, Brian. Good to see you. Cy B says, last night was fantastic. And I'll always remember the Yellowhammer live at Douth. Brilliant. Glad you enjoyed that. Uh, Marianne Dunn Kindia says, new viewer from Connecticut. Loved your 100th episode. Thanks. Uh, you're very welcome, Marianne. Welcome to the Henge. Mark Gordon says, good day from rainy slash monsoon like Iowa. Stay safe, Mark. Good afternoon to you. Peggy Thomas says, I'm a new watcher. Love your intimation. Hello, Peggy. You're very welcome along to Live Irish Myths. Nans O'Tomalty says, Hello, Anthony. Looking forward to another brilliant episode. So much fun. Thank you. And you're welcome, Nans. You're very welcome along. Daniel Williams says, Giagic, Anthony. Giagic, Daniel. 
Bernie Courtney says, good evening, guys, from a really wet and miserable Castle Bar. You are bringing the sunshine. Well, it happens to be shining here in the Boyne Valley, but I dare not open blinds and curtains in case I, I blot out uh, the view of the screen. Alex Casterton says the weather is nice in Albion. Bit of a breeze, just right. Going to be strange without you going live daily. Ah, sure, look. As I say, absence makes the heart grow fonder. Tarini Pendleton says, Bannock the all, fault you, Tarini. Robin Edgar says, it's hot and sunny again in Montreal today. I may go looking for local solstice sunset alignments later. Sounds interesting. Good hunting, Robin. Scott Taggart says, fault you to all the new members. Yes, indeed. Gail Farley says, greetings from Ann Arbor, Michigan. Hello, Gail. Fault you. Good afternoon. Uh, Noreen, O'Donnell, Noreen O'Donnell is watching. Hello, Noreen. How are you keeping? Hope you're well. Debbie Daly says, please don't feel bad honoring your creative time. We all need that too. Yes, well, it's just time is kind of, of, of you know, I need to kind of get back to some writing. Helen Guinan is in the house. Your Majesty, welcome along. Uh, Tecla e -boy is trying to sell us something, so I'm going to kick you out of the hinge. Bye. We don't appreciate spammers here or trolls. <laughs> You'll get kicked out the door rather rapidly. Boot up the backside. Bye. Uh, <laughs> Megan Walters says, it's been a privilege to join you, Anthony. Thanks for all the inspiration, laughs, and knowledge. Yes, and Coda is making his voice heard right now. Thanks, Megan, for the sentiments. Cyrene says, I'll be teleworking and listening to you nearly every day. I've been. I'll be going back to the office this next week and will miss the daily stories, education, and reading the uplifting banter. Oh, uh, well, sure. Uh, the ho hopefully you can just do keep rerunning the the uh, the, uh, the older uh, episodes. Tom Breslin says, hello from a hot, hazy, and humid New York. All the H's today. Hello, Tom. Good afternoon. Lorna Evers Monaghan says, hi, everyone. Saw you on... Was it the Irish Times video, Lorna? I wasn't sure. I saw you on a video up at Tara for the solstice. Yeah, very well spoken. Paula Snow Queen says, I need to cover old ground by starting from number one. I'm not getting the time. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's another issue. What did we say? 119 hours. Uh, there, there, that's. It's. Uh, Marsha Down says it's been a wonderful sorry I'm having to move because the white text against the background is hard to read uh, it has been a wonderful day every day uh, has, and has been so heartfelt for so many of us but also realize the need to continue your writing and look forward to more of that see you one, once or twice a week it's sometimes hard for us working folks to keep up with the everyday as well yeah that's true this will work for both of us brilliant good sentiments yes Today I watched Anthony YouTube from years ago and didn't recognize him. Was I really skinny? Uh, I have this sort of middle age spread now going on. You know, Barbara Rosanska says, very good evening from Poland. Hello, Barbara. You're welcome along. Peggy Thomas, love all things Irish. Been there twice and found my roots. Lovely stuff, Peggy. Rowan Grove says, the plumber's still here, but at least I can watch some. <laughs> good stuff. Okay, are we catching up? We are. Sabrini, Sabrina Spazi, Spaziani says, hi there. Thanks for sharing. Loved it. Best of luck, Sabrina from Vancouver. Thank you, Sabrina. What day will you be doing the shows, says Sandra? I totally understand why you need Anthony time. Thanks for giving us uh, on, on site for all this time. I'm not sure yet. I think it might be Mondays, but I'm not 100% sure. I will, I will obviously try and give you an answer. Announce that in advance. Barbara Murphy, I was surprised to see him in a National Geographic program on Stonehenge. Yes, indeed. And uh, there's a newly updated version of that. And you'll also see Ken Williams. My good friend Judy McQueen says hello, all Geoglitch. Julie Fowler says hello from sunny and hot Hal Albuquerque. Fall to Julie. Speak to us about this. Sir. I did already do an episode about Drone Hinge. Kelly, you might need to go back and have a look at some of the previous episodes. Marie Cronin says, greetings from West Cork, Folger. Patricia Mills says, hello from Victoria, British Columbia, Canada. Good evening, Patricia. Kevin Maguire says, hello from Bellewstown, Folger, Kevin.
Adina Spark says hello from New Mexico. Fault you, Adina. Liam Smith says good evening from RD in the Wee County. Good stuff, Liam. Good, nice to see some of the local, uh, the local heads, as it were. Sharon Kelly Smith says it's been so much fun. Thank you, Anthony. You're very welcome. Julianne Osborne is watching. Hello, Julianne. Coda is chasing the spammer down the drive. Good boy, good boy, Coda says Mar Barbara King. Bar sorry, says Margaret Ring. Even uh, uh, good, good boy, Coda and. Goodbye, spammer. <laughs> what time are we on? Oh my god, it's 20 minutes. We need to get moving. Hello from Colorado, Terry Lynn Zaharias. Hello, Nabamita says hi, Falcha Nabamita. Kelly Edison says, I said Stonehenge, yes, but I presume you're talking about Dronehenge, right? It seems we've caught up or we're, we're nearly there. Uh... Seamus Marr is uh, is uh, in the house on YouTube. Hello, Seamus. What would we say? We'd say 2100. Uh, yes. Erica Rivertree is slightly late, but that's fine. In Louisville, Kentucky. Hello, Erica. Uh, Michael Patrick Donnelly says, good evening, Falcha, Michael. And Ag G says, hi, Anthony. Projections are great. Would be even more immersive with just a candle on near you. The candle of vision. And anyway, a little bit of an introduction to photography. Uh, so uh, in, in, in photography circles, uh, photographers tend to talk a lot about, some photographers do anyway, about equipment. And I am not so hung up on equipment. Um, uh, Ken Williams would disagree. Uh, he and I both use Nikon uh, cameras. Uh, and we back and forth, and we have been doing for years. Um, but it wasn't, uh, I don't, so I, first off, I have to say that I actually don't use brand new equipment. Most of the equipment that I use for photography, I bought secondhand. So it's not always about uh, the equipment. It's what you can do with it. And of course, the most important thing about photography, especially when it comes to landscapes and monuments, is to be there at the right time and to put yourself there at the optimum in the optimum light and the optimum optimum conditions to capture uh, some magical photographs and once you do that uh, the rest is uh, elementary as it were it, it's fairly straightforward once you know the basic workings of uh, focus exposure iso and all that we're not going to get technical tonight in any way um, as a nikon user I, up until three or four years ago, used uh, what we would call crop sensor equipment, which would be um, APS-C uh, sensors. Uh, and I now use mostly full-frame equipment. Uh, I'm not going to explain the technical differences between that, but I suppose what you could say in a sort of a very, uh, which probably roughly describes what the difference is, full-frame cameras are those mostly used by the professionals and crop sensor cameras are more likely to be used by amateurs. Although you can get some high end crop sensor cameras that are very expensive and are as good as most of the pro cameras. And you can get some lower end pro models that aren't just perhaps as good as some. Anyway, um, so I'm going to show you a couple of cameras before we kick off. This isn't about the cameras and the lenses. This is about the images. Um, my... Uh, my workhorse these days for landscape photography and monuments uh, is the Nikon D750, which is actually a sort of a high-end uh, mid-market model. It is not a pro body. I'll show you the difference. The pro bodies are bigger, they're heavier, they're more robust, they have a faster um, shooting capabilities. The D750... Uh, I like because it's a 24 megapixel camera and megapixels don't always matter that much either. Most of my work, the vast majority of my work is for online and for my books. Uh, very, It's not very often my prints get printed any bigger than maybe uh, eight, eight, oh, 18 inches by 12 inches, uh, 45 centimeters by 30 centimeters. Sometimes I get very large prints done. Uh, and even the 12 megapixel camera is actually up to that, believe it or not. Uh, the D750 has the advantage of having a, uh, an articulated screen, which means that if you want to get really low down, you can get low down and you're still looking down at the image rather than having to put your eye 
uh, into the viewfinder. So that's the D750. And my principal wide angle lens these days is the Tamron 15 to 30 millimeter f2.8, uh, which is a fantastic wide angle lens and uh, beautiful for capturing those wider views of monuments. Up until I got the 750, my main uh, camera for uh, landscape photography was the Nikon D3X. This is actually quite an old camera. This is one of the old pro bodies. Um, so the Nikon is on the verge of releasing a D6. So the most current uh, pro body is a D5. This is two series earlier than the D5 because of the D4 series and the D3 series. This is also 24 megapixel camera. When it was released, it was actually the highest resolution uh, professional body available. Uh, it was a high resolution version of the, the D3, not as fast as in five frames a second. But even now, although it is, I think this was released in 2008, which makes it a 12 year old camera, even though it's 12 years old, it still produces fabulous images. Uh, and on low ISO, it goes down to ISO 64, which is great for those sort of uh, longer exposure on a tripod, uh, views of monuments, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and with very little noise and lots of nice color saturation. A very, very capable camera. In fact, some of you may have seen, um, I'm just looking at the, the card here. Some of you may have seen that I took some images uh, of uh, Venus close to the Pleiades uh, back in early April. And uh, not sure if you can see that there, but that's one of the images that's still on the card there. Um, the... Uh, the slightly earlier version of that was the D3, and the D3 is a 12 megapixel camera. This one has a 20 mil f 1.4 Sigma art lens on it, which is another fabulous wide angle lens, fabulous and heavy as well. The D3 is almost identical to the D3X, or should I say the D3X is almost identical to the D3, because the D3X was a slightly later iteration. D3 was re uh, released in 2007, and at the time, it, it, it was a revolutionary camera, and it has long been described since then as a classic, one of the best uh, professional uh, camera bodies ever released. I bought this secondhand for nostalgic reasons because I wanted one, and it was in pristine condition when I bought it. Uh, when I bought it two years ago, uh, it only had 12,000 pictures on the uh, on the shutter, which is a bit like counting mileage in a car. It's a good way of indicating how much use a camera has had. And I've looked after it very well. I'll show you one or two images tonight that were taken with it. And I hope that you'll agree. Uh, a, cl a classic camera that's still very, very capable. I would never get rid of it. Um, uh, uh, even if I stop using it, it, it it's uh, it, it's got value as being, if you were a car collector, you know, people are into their classic cars. Well, it would be a bit like having some sort of one of those uh, Mustangs or something in, in your driveway. And by the way, when I'm going out taking photographs, I usually only take one or two camera bodies with me. And I usually choose depending on what I'm going to take. And the latest of the pro bodies that I have is the Nikon D4S. So this is a series up from the D3 series. It's more, it's a more recent camera uh, and it's faster. It's capable of taking, I think it's a uh, 10 or 11 frames per second. Uh, and the battery life in these pro bodies is very, very good. Uh, you could get um, off the D3 with a new battery. You could take 4,000 pictures on a single charge, and there are very, very few cameras that will get even close to that these days. In terms of the drone, uh, I have to mention the drone because there'll be a few drone images. Uh, the drone that I use now uh, is uh, the Mavic Pro by DJI, which is this small little beauty here. That's the drone, yeah, small, very portable, much quieter in the air than the Phantom series uh, from DJI, which are bigger and heavier, uh, a very lightweight uh, portable uh, option. Uh, and uh, so uh, if you've seen any of my drone footage or my images lately, that's what they're taken with. Uh, and the drone, sorry, I have to move some things here just for a moment. And this is the Phantom 3 Advance. This is the drone that discovered Drone Hinge. I don't use it now. And again, like the D3, I have no intention of selling it. Uh, not so much because the P3A is a classic, uh, but more because of the sentimental value of it and the fact that this was the camera 
and uh, the drone that discovered drone hinge. Uh, so I think for historical value, I will keep it. Uh, and perhaps, uh, who knows, it might end up in a museum someday, you know? I don't know. As the drone that discovered drone hinge, I haven't got the propellers attached, but you can see it's a much bigger and heavier beast than the Mavic Pro. Much noisier too. Anyway, enough about the equipment. There's plenty of lenses as well. I have invested in good glass, and good glass is important. Good glass is nearly more important than the camera body, to be honest. So that's enough talking about equipment. Now we'll talk about the images. Um, one of the wonderful things about living, uh, I think I've said this in previous episodes, um, that if we were to be able to magically fly through that projector screen and through my bookshelves and go off, we would arrive at Newgrange after a distance as the crow flies of just four miles, 4.1 miles is the distance from here to Newgrange. I'm very lucky in that if I want to go to Newgrange to take photographs, I can get there depending on traffic in about 13, 14, 15 minutes. Uh, the roads between here and there are all sort of back, back, back roads, back small country roads. Um, well, I don't mind that. I love going out there and I go out there very, very regularly. Uh, generally speaking, twice, three times a week, uh, depending. The wonderful thing about spending so much time there is that uh, that has enabled me to capture views uh, that, um, you know, people, the majority of people who visit Newgrange, and it's closed at the moment due to COVID, but it's reopening, I think, in the coming few weeks. Um, uh, the vast majority of people who visit Newgrange do so in daylight hours between, it depends on whether it's summer or winter, but generally speaking, say between the hours of 9 a.m. and 6, 7 p.m., depending, as I say, it closes earlier in the winter. Uh, I think the last tour in the winter is half three, maybe three o'clock, finishing at four. Um, in the summer, I think the last tour is six or seven in the evening, something like that. So, you know, a lot of people who've come from abroad to visit Newgrange won't see it in this light. Um, now, the disadvantage is that I'm outside of the field in which Newgrange is located because obviously that's controlled, that, that's locked and gated and all the rest in the evening times. But the, the, the nice thing is that there's a public road that runs around to the east and to the south of Newgrange. Um, and there are plenty of viewpoints uh, to the monument, much more so than the monuments of Douth and Nouth, believe it or not. Newgrange is much more visible. That's something that's very interesting. It's almost like you'd imagine because it occupies uh, primacy, <coughs> primacy among the three that uh, it, it was su supposed to be the most prominent by the builders. So uh, this is uh, a November, uh, a late November image after Samhain as the days are shortening rapidly, the last month towards winter solstice. And the sun is setting, and because it's cloudy mostly, uh, the sun's light is getting dispersed into, onto the underbelly of the clouds, uh, cr creating this very, very dramatic sky. And, of course, that would have been taken with uh, quite a wide-angle lens. Anyway, I have quite a few images to get through. I think I have about 100. So um, even if I do 30 seconds on each, uh, that would take us 50 minutes. Uh, so I, I have to try and take less than 30 seconds. There'll be a few, uh, I got a few errors because there was a problem copying files to the card, which is why I was late starting. There was some corruption issue. issue. So occasionally we'll get this blank screen, but we'll skip past it. This is Isle Namirin. This is the stone of division, divisions. Uh, Kristen Gray Taggart asks if I use uh, processing. Yes, I do. I shoot all my images raw uh, as a raw file rather than a JPEG. Uh, and uh, the thing about it is, and there's, there has to be a very brief discussion of this, is that people say, some people say, well, well, if you process them, you're changing them. In fact, uh, with processing, what you're actually doing is making the image more closely, hi, James, James Perry is watching, more closely resemble what the eye actually saw at the scene because the camera sensor is not capable. It doesn't have the dynamic range that your eye have. It doesn't have the uh, sensitive sensitivity. So when you look at a scene, your eye can reduce the highlights and boost the shadows so that you see a balanced image. The camera can't do that. So you either, uh, with the camera, you either have to expose for the highlights or for the shadows. I generally expose for the highlights 
which means I have to boost the shadows. So yes, there is processing of images. This is Island of Mirren uh, taken in May 2018. Um, this was at twilight uh, at the time of the Bialtana Fire Festival. Um, and uh, a beautiful, beautiful evening, lovely and warm, stars shining, and that lovely afterglow was there. This is a beautiful time to take photographs because you get the deep blue. It's much better than this black. It provides color, it provides, and you'll notice something about my images. I'm a big fan of color. I like to accentuate the colors of nature and the colors that the sky provides. So I don't do um, black and white or monochrome imagery occasionally. I, I, I've, I've, you know, reprocessed an image uh, to monochrome, but by and large, I like my images to have vibrant colors. In this case, uh, you know, you see the, 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 the lighting here. Well, that's done with a torch. So what I've done is I've set the camera up on a tripod. I've put the self timer on for 10 seconds. That's to give me time to get from the camera to the stone. And then I, I do something like a 15, 20, 30 second exposure at very low ISO, always, nearly always a low ISO for these kind of shots. And then hidden from the camera, I provide lighting uh, with a torch or flash or sometimes both, uh, sometimes a mixture of torches and, and a mixture of flashes. Uh, and I light the subject, wait till I hear the camera click, stop, come back to the camera, check and see if I'm happy, see if there's an area that needs more light or less light. You may also know, those of you who are in graphic design, uh, that blue and yellow are extremely nice color complements. There's a color complement chart, uh, and it happens that these are two colors that are provided uh, by twilight uh, quite often. Uh, and so it's ideal uh, to light something with a yellow light, a yellowish light, if there is blue in the sky. Anyway, I've, I've gone on too long about that one. There's only just a couple of self-portraits in here. Uh, and the reason I put this one in here um, was because, first of all, this is the calendar stone, which is one of my favorite stones. Uh, we've done an episode about this uh, at Nauth. Uh, and these are apparently depictions of the metonic cycle uh, calculations by ancient astronomers. And the first of all is to show you the scale of the stone. So all of these stones were brought here from somewhere else. Uh, a great deal of the grey wacky stones at New Grange and Nauth were brought from Clara Head by sea and river. It's an immense task. This thing weighs probably three or four tons. And <clears throat> so you see the flash there. Well, there are two flashes at work here. Uh, the camera triggers the flashes. The flashes are set up remotely, sometimes on separate tripods. As you can see, uh, that one, uh, sorry, that one is on a tripod. You can probably see the tripod there, hopefully. Um, uh, and so you're lighting the image from uh, an, a, a very tight angle to accentuate the carvings. Because if you flash it from the front and you light it from the front, you don't see that. Uh, you you only see, uh, you, you can't see the carvings. It's, very, it's hard to describe uh, until you actually see it in action. This works better in low light, in twilight, and, and at nighttime. Uh, however, uh, with... The right settings in the middle of a bright day, you can still get very good results. Uh, and there I am standing. We had this one the other night. I did an impromptu uh, talk the other night, and that's just merely to show the scale of the mound at Mill Mount, which is, according to folklore, one of the monuments uh, associated with Brunabonia, a prehistoric burial mound, the burial place of Avergin or Aragon, Amergin Glungial, the poet or bard of the Milesians. Uh, upon which uh, was built in the early 1800s uh, a fortified uh, Martello Tower. Now, here we go. Here's an image that I really, really love. I was at, this is taken from a, a well-known beauty spot between Slane and Navan, closer to Navan, on the southern side of the Boyne. So that's the, that's the, that's the Boyne River there that you see. Um, this was taken uh, on a, an evening in April, a spring evening. And... The sunlight was extraordinary because the sun was reasonably low in the sky. It's actually just, sorry, it's just out of the image, just above the image here. And because there was a lot of cloud, the sun being, the sunlight was being scattered into beams. And the landscape, even though it was April, uh, you know, and still not sort of summery, as it were, you can see the leaves haven't come on the trees yet. It was still looking fairly lush. And there was this, uh, I have to, I have to, 
I, oh, by the way, I have, I have a laser pointer on order. I ordered it from a, a company in Dublin today. So for my next presentation, I will have a laser pointer. See this lone horse down here? Uh, so I just, I thought the whole scene was uh, magical. Well, I want you to know that um, uh, that photo was captured with the D3. Uh, and as I say, the D3, well, when it was captured, the D3 was an 11-year-old camera. It's now 13 years old. Uh, a very, very, very capable camera. Uh, and, uh, you know, sometimes with the right conditions, uh, you just, you're just there at a scene and you see something and you go, that's beautiful. I'll see if I can capture some essence of that. And it is, uh, I, I think you'll agree, a timeless photograph. Uh, the ruin here is a Dunmo castle. That's very interesting because Dunmo means the fort of the cow. And I think that that's likely to be a very, very ancient place name associated with the moon. Don't forget uh, Boan, uh, both in uh, the bright cow, uh, the Milky Way, the moon and all of that. This is a shot taken actually at Baltray in 2007. So this was taken with one of, with probably my D70. I still have that, but it's broken. Um, I keep keep an old camera because I can't sell it. Uh, and this was at dawn on the winter solstice in 2007. And uh, if you remember, we did an episode about Baltray. The, the large standing stone is like that. It's got a very sort of long surface and then it's got a very sort of uh, thin surface uh, it's like a big hand and when you look along the surface of it you're looking out towards the islands of Rockabill and of course there's a mythological connection there and that's where the sun rises on winter solstice this is very close to the estuary of the Boyne so you're looking out over the sea the sea lies beyond the bluff uh, the the, uh, the the reclaimed sand dunes here and if you turn to the south uh, you 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 see the boy the boy estuary. Uh, we talked about that one in the last talk. It's one of the recent composites I did at Newgrange Farm, showing some of the hidden archaeology there. The largest of the circles that you see there is the Riverside Henge that was discovered by Ken Williams. I'm not sure if you're still watching Ken. Uh, but uh, that was discovered by Ken Williams in the days immediately after we discovered Drone Henge. Uh, but uh, it's a, a fascinating uh, landscape. I didn't intend to talk about those tonight. Uh, this is another drone shot taken at a stone circle called Bohonach, uh, B-O-H-O-N-A-C-H, which is not too far from uh, Clonakilty in County Cork. Uh, and it was a winter evening. It was a Samhain evening. Uh, myself and a friend uh, were down there uh, doing doing some filming and we got permission to access the land and fly and take photographs and it just happened that you know in the last hour of the day uh, the sun lit up the clouds the clouds came over and they looked sort of very threatening and dark uh, and the sun illuminated them lovely and just sometimes as I say it happens like that the wonderful thing about a drone is it gives you a perspective that you can't really get on the ground. It's very hard in a lot of cases unless you're overlooking them from a hill or a, a bank of sorts. It's very hard to see a full monument like a stone circle or a mound without getting that little bit of elevation, you know. And it's not uh, like uh, the altitude here was only about probably 30 or 40 feet. It's not that far above the ground. Uh, but it doesn't have to be. You just need that little bit of height. Oh, sometimes I just see things and I just capture them. I was at Bridget's Well in Kildare and people had left rosary beads around the cross there. And uh, the way the sun was shining, uh, this was taken in winter time. the way the sun was shining, it just found a gap through the trees and illuminated the centre of the cross. And I thought that was very Newgrange-like. Uh, you know, the way the sun shines into the central cross-shaped chamber of Newgrange at winter solstice. This is, uh, I think I, I may have shown this one uh, recently too. Uh, this is Mound B or the Dogdas Mound. This is the largest of all the satellite mounds of Brunabonia. And I see it's getting darker now and it's got cloudy here, which is great because you're able to see the images better. Uh, this is the mound to which Dogda was said to have uh, gone to after uh, he was dispossessed of Newgrange by Angus. And of course, Newgrange is up on the top of the ridge here. This is the Boyne here. When you fly early in the morning, even in the summertime, it's more pronounced, I think, in the winter uh, because there tends to be more moisture uh, and the nights are colder and damper. But even in the summer, you get this mist that hangs around in the Boyne. Some mornings, the mist and the fog goes right up to Newgrange. Uh, and some mornings, it hugs the river. It makes for very atmospheric shots. 
always worthwhile uh, flying early in the morning or bringing the camera and bringing the camera and or the drone, preferably both. Uh, and Ken Williams is another man who knows all about this. Sorry about that. Uh, this is another monument of source. This is the Boyne Cable Bridge or the uh, Mary McAleese Boyne Valley Bridge, which carries the M1 motorway. That's the main road that connects Dublin uh, with Belfast. Uh, and it passes just west of Drogheda over the Boyne. And on my way back home from one of those many uh, expeditions, uh, early morning uh, photography expeditions, uh, I just happened to see this scene and I stopped the car. Uh, you can see that it's a, a very, it's been a very frosty night. The grass is coated with frost here and the mist is just hanging lovely and being, being beautifully lit by the sun. Uh, this is Cairn S at Loch Crew, Sleevna Collier, the Eastern Hill at Loch Crew, the same one that has Cairn T on it. Uh, this was taken on the 7th of August. So this is uh, Lunasa. Uh, so the sun has, has gone to the north and come back again from summer solstice. And this is the, the old harvest festival celebration. And this is one of the reasons uh, that I believe that the uh, celebration of the cross quarter days actually goes back uh, to uh, the the uh, Neolithic because there are alignments towards uh, uh, the, the sunrises and sunsets at that time. George Dula says, do you need a permit to operate a drone? It depends on what country you're in. In Ireland, you do not need a license, but you do need to register your drone if it weighs more than a kilogram with the Irish Aviation Authority. And there are also regulations governing the flying of drones. So you don't actually need a license, but you do in America, uh, and it's getting quite strict there. Uh, at the moment, anyway, thankfully, uh, things are, are still quite open here. And this is the same cairn again. This is two days earlier. I remember this day specifically. Myself and my son, Luke, had driven from Drogheda to Loch Crew, which takes an hour. And uh, when we got there, the, the sky was full of this most amazingly dark cloud uh, and it rained very, very heavily. We sat in the car, the wipers were going, the, uh, the air conditioning was on full blast. Um, and we sat there saying, I have wasted an hour of a trip. And just at the last minute, I said, oh, it's brightening up there. And I said, right, grab everything. Uh, we grabbed camera, tr tripod, camera bag, um, and and coats and umbrellas and walked up the hill really, really quickly. It's not sort of hill you run up unless you're very, very fit. Uh, and when we got there, this was the scene that unfolded. The sun was just appearing momentarily beneath the belly of this enormous storm cloud uh, and before it set on the horizon, uh, creating beautiful uh, a beautiful opportunity. And uh, this is, again... Uh, it's the 7th of October, uh, 7th of August, uh, 2017. Uh, and this is the exa same site again. And you can see that moment by moment, the scene changes. And, and look, you can see the megalithic art here on this stone. Of course, I have illuminated the stones in the foreground using flash. Uh, so I've exposed for the sky here for the highlights. Uh, so if I hadn't flashed in this, this would all be in darkness. This would just be a silhouette against this lovely sky. Uh, so uh, it takes a little bit of practice uh, and there's always a little bit of um, trial and error uh, when you're taking photographs like this. Sometimes you set the flash too powerful, too strong. Sometimes you have the aperture of the camera or the shutter speed uh, wrong and you have to adjust and you have to adjust quickly because the conditions are changing quickly. This is Cairn U at La Crew uh, and uh, 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 it's one of these twilight shots. Uh, with the moon in the in the distance there. Hope you can see that, the moon in the sky. Uh, and again, illuminated by remote flash. Uh, and uh, uh, I think there's probably several. Uh, I may actually have been crouched down in there firing the flash uh, at different angles. And this is the same cairn uh, on at Imbolc, uh, early, early morning Imbolc in 2017. Uh, when myself and Ken and Lar Dooley had uh, gone to Loch Crew uh, to try and capture the sunrise. Uh, and we did, and I captured a lovely series of images. I was very, very glad that I had made the effort to get up really early that morning and travel uh, across the land uh, to capture these images. Uh, this is uh, known as Site Q. No, Site P, I apologize, Site P. 
I always get them confused because it actually looks like a queue. This is one of the embanked henges or the embanked enclosures of Brunabonia. Uh, so uh, New Newgrange is basically that way. Uh, Geraldine Stout identifies this as Cashel Angusso from the Dunshanicus description of the Boyne monuments. Uh, and you might be able to see in really low light, it, it's very, very denuded. Uh, it was plowed over, uh, you know, in the 20th century uh, but, and it's very denuded. But you can see you can see the, the shape of it when the light is very low. And of course, the sun was nearly touching the horizon. Um, you may also be able to see the, what we call the annex, the add on. And all of the hinge, a lot of the hinges at Brunabonia have this add on. The field immediately behind this one here, uh, well, this image was taken in March 2017. So that was a year and a few months before myself and Ken found Drone Henge, which is in this field here. This is the southerly mo southernmost megalithic site. I think I'm pretty sure. Uh, again, if Ken is here, he'll correct me. Uh, the, this is a pair of standing stones or a stone alignment at Cape Clear in County Cork. Uh, I was there in, I think it was 2016. Um, so you can't get any more southerly than this in, in Ireland, even though it's an island, it's it's still part of Ireland. So this is the southern southernmost uh, megalithic site in Ireland. And again, I made the effort that day to walk down to the far end of the island to find these stones at uh, sunset and twilight when I when I felt that the opportunity would be would be ripe for uh, a nice image. This is Island of Mirren again, uh, and this is again from May 2018. Uh, so you can see that the sky has deepened, the twilight has deepened, and in this case, I've lit the underneath of the stone with a torch, but I've also flashed, and you can probably see the light mark in the grass. I'm standing off uh, out of the image here, out of uh, view of the camera, and. So I've probably run in there and shone it. No, I tell you what it, no, I remember what it is. I remember what it is. There was a couple of fairy lights, little candles uh, somebody had placed there. Uh, and so those candles were creating this glow. And then I stood up here and, and uh, triggered uh, one of the flashes uh, and, and, and let off a few, a few zaps. I remember this because I didn't have my tripod. I had left it in the bloody car. And to walk back and get the tripod and come back here again would have taken me probably a half an hour, maybe more. Uh, and so you can probably see what I did was I put my... my um, I put my camera sitting on a, on a book and a, and a coat or a jumper. Uh, and you can probably see the, the blades of grass here because it's very low to the ground. Sometimes you have to improvise and it, it can work out very well. I hope you agree. Uh, this is a, a panoramic shot. So this is a series of actually three photographs stitched together. And this is taken uh, out uh, above the Irish Sea with the drone. Uh, looking back, uh, Paula Snow Queen says timer. Yes. That last image would have been uh, at least 30 seconds, possibly a minute. I have a, I have a, one of these uh, cable or remote timers and I, ca I can add, I, I can make it a minute or two minutes long. Um, Clever Head, as you know, we've discussed this quite often in the episodes. This is uh, the headland where uh, a lot of the, um, the uh, grey wacky, the uh, green grit as it's called, uh, this muddy shale uh, uh, was retrieved for the curb stones of, of Newgrange, Nouth and Douth, uh, and the major structural stones. Um, so this doesn't really give it a sense of scale. Again, a very atmospheric, uh, a very atmospheric evening, a hazy evening, and the sun was going down. Uh, and you can see the harbour and the port here uh, on the northern side of Clower Head. Um, yeah, I really like that one. I have a video, uh, and uh, you, you will recognise, I hope, you will recognize instantly uh, that scenery in the video because the video is about Clara Head uh, and it was, sh it was shot on that evening. So I also took some photographs. Uh, Clara Head, and uh, the video is on YouTube. I'm going to paste in the link so you can have a look at it afterwards. It's called Clara Head Archaeological and Geological Secrets. So I'm just going to paste it in there as a comment beneath the uh, YouTube and uh, Facebook videos. So you can maybe have a look at that video later on. I hope you enjoy that, actually. And uh, this is uh, uh, the, the only uh, surface expression of a geological impact of 420 million years ago, because before that time, the northern part of Ireland and the southern part were actually on separate continents, uh, divided at one time by an ocean, 
uh, called by geologists the Apatus Ocean. Uh, by about two or 3,000 kilometers, they were separated and eventually they came together and smashed together. And so there's a, a seam called the Yapatus Suture, which runs from Clara Head down to Shannon. But only at Clara Head do you see this uh, surface expression of it where the, where the rocks were forced upwards and you get vertical formations. And what they did was the, me the megalith builders prized stones off the the face of, of, of this these vertical formations uh, and use them as curb stones. That's taken on the same evening with the one of the Nikons. And I saw this bird perched on one of the old uh, ruins on the top of Clara Head Hill. And I just moved around very quickly and zoomed in so that I put the sun and the bird in the same shot. Actually, I might be able to zoom in on that. I hope I can zoom. I apologize. Yeah, I like that one. Uh, what time are we on? We're on 55 minutes. Okay, better better keep going. Uh, this was taken in January of this year. I was out at Baltray uh, for the dawn and was seriously impressed by the amount of birds out there. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, huge flocks of birds. Uh, lap wings, um, um what are they called the the curlews the curlews oh man i couldn't get over the amount of curlews uh, and so they were lifting off the mud flats at baltray in huge flocks and swooping around in the sunlight and it was just extraordinary um actually i have quite a few images from that day that i haven't shared i must go back and dig some more out this is doubt taken from the drone and you'll see here uh, the evidence of the uh, famine era uh, excavations by Frith, J. H. Frith and his colleagues, which left this huge crater. It wasn't an excavation; it was a treasure hunt, and it was a bad job, uh, and it left the monument in, in a sorry state. And you'll see some of the curb stones peeping through here beneath the the uh, sycamore tree, and the stone of the seven sons is is part of this group here on the uh, on on the eastern side of the mount. This is Douth again, uh, and that same southern boundary of the of the monument, uh, taken at night in December, uh, 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 not far from the solstice time. And uh, this takes quite a bit of work. So you see the moon is lighting the shot, and in the distance, uh, Netterville Manor uh, is lit up with its own sort of yellow lights. But I actually walked along here with a torch illuminating these curbstones. And separately, I also had to go up onto the mound behind the bushes and, and um, uh, illuminate uh, the tree using remote flash. So there's actually quite a lot of work in this image. Uh, and in fact, sometimes what you do is that, you know, you take one image uh, for the stones and you take a separate image for the tree because it's too much work to do in, 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 in one image and you blend the two images into one afterwards. Uh, yes, it is a form of cheating, but not really. Uh, here's another composite image. This was taken in uh, January, just gone. Uh, and you'll probably, I hope that you can recognize uh, that the resolution is enough for you to be able to see uh, Orion. Uh, I'm just making sure that this corresponds and Taurus and the Pleiades. Uh, and that is Sirius down sitting above the mound and Procyon, the small dog. And what I did was I walked along with a torch along the pathway and then I walked around the mound. Uh, but I didn't have long enough. I didn't have a timer with me, so I only had 30 seconds. And I ended up having to add two images together to combine into one. But uh, you can see how uh, a painting with light, uh, Kirsten, yes, indeed. You can see how, um, you know, painting with light um, is, is uh, oh, just, I mean, otherwise all of this foreground would all be just silhouette. This would be all darkness against this sky. And that is this famous sycamore tree. This is a super wide angle uh, shot taken on a fisheye, an eight millimeter fisheye uh, lens uh, in the summer, I think, of 2017. Um, and you can see here, the ex this is a, a number of the curb stones exposed on that side. Uh, and the sycamore, which is also known as European maple. I didn't know that until a couple of years ago um, in full in full leaf. 
again, sometimes things are moody. You're, you go to a place and it's overcast and there's times like that where you kind of barely take the camera out of the camera bag. But then just momentarily something happens where the sun is momentarily appearing out, you know, beaming light down through a, a distant gap in the clouds and just creates a little bit of atmosphere. This is Duan O'Neill, the mound of the hostages uh, in the... Uh, uh, on the hill of Tara. By the way, a, a great deal of these images are available to purchase on my website. I should say that. I should have said it at the beginning on mythicalireland.com. If you go into the shop and into the image gallery, uh, a great deal of them. If you see one here that you really like, that you'd like to buy, and it's not on the website, uh, send me an email. Because, uh, you know, my, there's no there's no, there's no, no problem. I just pick my favourites for the website. This is another shot of Duan O'Neill, the Mount of the Hostages. Uh, this man was excavated uh, by um, uh, Sean P. O'Reardon in the uh, 1950s and con contained a huge concentration of uh, bone material. It's a very small passage mound with a very sh short uh, passage and chamber, which is aligned uh, approximately on the sunrises at Samhain and Imbolc, the beginning of uh, winter and the beginning of spring. And again, I was just at Tara this evening. This is an August evening. And you can see that the sun is just about to set here at the distance. And then it started to light up this curtain of cloud uh, with orange, uh, reddish light. Uh, and uh, I uh, lit the front of the monument uh, with remote flash. So just again, to lift that detail and to provide something for you to see that otherwise would have been in in shade or in shadow or in silhouette. I've been known to take a little bit of aviation photography, something you're probably not interested in, but from time to time, uh, I, I take pictures of airplanes too. I was up at Dublin Airport in uh, just uh, in the early days of the new year. Uh, actually, this one was taken late December 2019, uh, and there was a beautiful red sky, and I saw this plane taking off into the red sky, and I couldn't uh, refuse the shot. This is the... Uh, uh, the backstone of Cairn T or the Hags Cairn at Loch Crew. This is the one that famously receives the light of the equinox sun. I'm very glad that I have a lot of photographs from inside Cairn T because it is now locked and closed permanently. Well, un until there's for any ch change in that, it seems to be closed permanently due to damage, uh, subsidence caused by people walking on top of the cairn. Uh, which which continued to happen even though people uh, even though there were signs warning people not to do it and asking people not to do it uh, and so if you've ever been in Carantee you'll know that this is a very small uh, recess this isn't the sort of recess like the ones at Newgrange that you can walk into uh, it very much involves a, a, a bit of manual dexterity uh, bending down first of all but also getting your legs over a, a, a sill stone Setting up a tripod in there is difficult because you have to do it very carefully so you don't damage anything. Uh, and then when you have it set up, you have to get a focus, which involves when, when it's in almost darkness, you need to use a torch or some sort of light source to get your focus. And then you need to light the stone. In this case, I, I, I think uh, from memory, I lit this either with the light or, or off my smartphone or with a small torch. Uh, and that would involve moving it along outside of the view of the camera, either below or sometimes beneath or sometimes uh, a combination of both. And I probably would have actually taken, uh, you know, probably a dozen variants of this shot to get the perfect one where everything's illum illuminated properly. Uh, you can see there's a portion of the stone that broke off in the past century or so. And that's another problem is frost, you know, um, you know, this is precious. This is 5,000 year old, probably more, probably a little bit older than the Bruna Bonia monuments. You see these sun wheels or the floral patterns that receive the sunlight and zigzags and all sorts of patterns on it. Really, really beautiful stone. Uh, this is Irk's grave on the hill of Slane, said to be the, the resting place of Bishop, the first Bishop of Slane, Irk, who was installed by St. Patrick in, allegedly in the fifth century. It's uh, unusual in that it, 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 it consists of these two what look like standing stones. One wonders always looking at this whether it isn't in fact uh, an older monument uh, that was uh, adopted into the Christian story. Who knows? Maybe someday they'll get a chance to do some excavation uh, in the ground beneath it and find out a little bit more. Uh, again, you can see that was a fairly foggy, misty morning. A few, few atmospheric pictures from Slane. I hope coming up. Oh, yeah, I threw this one in because uh, this was taken last November, late last November. And it's a very rare 
sort of lineup of, of planets and, and the moon. Uh, and, and I caught, uh, you can see there, Jupiter just looking to catch Jupiter before it is set. Uh, Jupiter, Venus, and Saturn all in the sky with the moon. Uh, as you know, astronomy is something I'm very interested in. So I do try and I have done for years to try and get pictures of the, the moon uh, and the planets and various constellations over the monuments. Uh, it just so happens I was at Newgrange, but I wasn't able to get Newgrange into the shot. So uh, I had to make do without it. And there, for instance, the full moon coming up over the Martello Tower at Millmount. Um, and because if you've watched the moon, it drifts very, fairly quickly, actually. Uh, you have to keep reframing the shot, keep moving the camera and tripod as the moon rises, just to make sure you get that perfect shot. This uh, pinnacle of the roof of Millmount is actually an artwork uh, by a local artist. Uh, I think it's called the pinnacle. Uh, I think the artist's name is Ronan Halpin. I could be forgiven. Mello Nello is in the house. Congratulations, Mello, on the birth of uh, Marvin, isn't it, to yourself and Melanie? Yes, indeed. Great stuff. Delighted for you. Uh, Curbstone 52 at Newgrange. Uh, I was yearning after this shot for years. And the thought struck me, uh, uh, I think this was taken in 2018, the thought struck me that, you know, uh, the only time that you're going to get a shot like this where you can light the stone for long enough with a torch is in either darkness or uh, in some sort of deep twilight. Uh, and in order to, to get this shot, uh, I asked permission from the OPW if I could uh, access Newgrange uh, on one of the solstice mornings, um, you know, at a time before they would generally let people in for safety reasons. Uh, and I had to wear a head torch at all times. Uh, and uh, I was accompanied by somebody. Uh, and in actual fact, this is my favourite all-time shot of Curbstone 52, because as much as I've tried to get good shots of it uh, during daylight with flashes, I've never, ever been able to match uh, the extraordinary lighting that I got uh, in this case. Uh, and, you know, the, 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 the lavish nature of the carvings at Newgrange at the entrance stone and Curb 52 and, of course, Curb 67, uh, is it's kind of hard to explain, but it's it's like the relief work is more exaggerated. The 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 uh, the grooves uh, uh, and in this case the spirals and the arcs are deeper. Uh, there are quite a lot of these cup holes uh, on the stone, and it's just exquisite. Uh, and it really deserved a little bit of time and a little bit of work uh, with. Uh, I think that was taken with the D3X and probably the uh, the Sigma 20mm uh, lens uh, to provide as much uh, sharpness as possible. And then again, you know, sometimes you're just at an out and it's, uh, it's the summertime and you're getting these convective rain showers, uh, these rapidly forming cumulonimbus clouds, and you don't know whether you're going to get absolutely drenched by a shower or whether you're going to be lucky enough to avoid them. Uh, and sometimes the shower clouds with these towering features in the distance. Uh, and that is Nouth and some of its satellite mounds. Uh, there's another view of Nouth. This was taken in the springtime uh, and again in the evening time, uh, just when the clouds are being lit magically by the setting sun. Uh, and there's actually a little bit of, you'll see this wispy uh, feature from this cloud. That's actually just rain again falling in the distance, being illuminated by the sun. What are we on? 108. Well, I've, I'm, I'm in no rush to finish, so I'll, I'll, I'll finish when, when we get to the last image. Um, this is uh, an image I showed in the impromptu show the other night, but uh, one of my all-time favourites captured in March of this year uh, on that morning when the fog was just doing exactly the right thing and it had been frosty. You can see that the ground is still frosty here uh, on the ground at now. The, the ground that's in the shade, uh, the frost hasn't melted yet. Uh, the ground that's exposed to the sun the frost is more melted. And then, of course, this mist and those really long shadows, uh, you know, um, uh, produced by the low sun. And just there in the image and on YouTube, just there, uh, I have to move the pens to slightly different positions uh, for YouTube and Facebook is Newgrange in the distance. Yeah, well worth that morning getting up early. I got up early with the purpose of trying to get the three monuments with mist around them. And I uh, managed to do that. Um, 
and, and uh, a magical, magical morning. Coming back to the house that day, I was full of the joys of life. I was like, yep, that's brilliant. Uh, that is um, that is job a job done, and those are images that are going to, you know, um, probably be used in a book in the future uh, and will illuminate or illustrate, should I say, uh, blog posts, etc. cetera. Um, that was taken actually a week before, that was the 5th of March, that was a week before the first COVID restrictions, uh, sadly. But anyway, uh, this is Curbstone 15 at uh, Nouth. Uh, 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 a, a while back, I, I, again, I secured special permission from the OPW to spend a lot of time at Nouth taking pictures of the curbstones. Now, it was during the day, but luckily it was a very dull day, which meant that I could get more light. And this is mostly achieved with flash rather than torches. Um, this is the one that there was a proposal that there was a swan head on this stone. That's that's not the case at all. There is no swan head. Uh, you'll see my video on that. I did a blog post on it as well. But I can't help wondering if this, you know, we discussed about the sundials and that this is in the wrong position to be a sundial is in facing the wrong direction uh, as to whether this isn't actually half a plan of a hinge or one of those uh, 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 circles, uh, you know, because that's almost what it looks like. But anyway, we're speculating here and the spiral. And then there's a number of circles around the, uh, the fan-like feature. So I just want to tell you technically what this involves is this involves uh, rooting the camera and the tripod and making sure that it, it is not going anywhere. It's not going to move even a millimeter uh, and taking two separate exposures, one of which involves flashing from this side and the other remote flash from this side uh, to make sure that you bring out all. If you try to do it all in one, unless the stone has an extremely flat surface, you'll only end up illuminating uh, some of the carvings uh, and to try and get them, them all illuminated uh, and it may actually have been the case that there were several flash flashes from both sides to get everything illuminated. Oh, yeah, this was um, during the winter time. The OPW had uh, a couple of, uh, excuse me, uh, st sky watching, star watching events at now gave me the opportunity to get some photographs at night at now, which is a very rare opportunity. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is actually a, a corn drying or a grain drying kiln. This is a, a, a medieval structure, uh, one of the later structures at Mouth. Um, but uh, I just thought with the sky and everything, it just made a nice image. Uh, and again, this is illuminated with a little a small torch and uh, involved a long exposure photo uh, camera on a tripod. And I'm walking towards that and I'm, I'm basically trying to move the torch up and down as much as possible and illuminate all the stones evenly as much as possible. As you can see, it isn't actually entirely even. It's very hard to get that uh, result. But other than that, trying to get this photograph would have, would have without that light, would have left all this in, sh in shadow. And there is now taken from the drone and... Uh, uh, the sun heading down. This is the Hill of Slain in the distance um, on YouTube. Uh, the Nouth complex being beautifully lit up by the, the rays of the setting sun. Golden hour, we call this, photographers. The last hour of the day. Or the first hour of the day is also golden hour when the sun is low and it creates this really beautiful golden light and illuminates everything. It makes it look uh, really nice. Sorry, I forgot to say OPW is the Office of Public Works. And that is the body of government that looks after the national monuments and a lot of our public parks and uh, heritage sites. And, of course, you can see the Boyne River winding its way here in the distance. This is another photograph from now from one of those star watching evenings. This stone, as you can see, has megalithic art on it, a spiral here and another feature here and, and several uh, carvings here. This is actually part of a wall of a medieval house. And so the stone had basically been robbed or lifted from one of the other megalithic sites uh, and incorporated into the house. Uh, uh, so uh, reuse uh, and recycle, as it were. Uh, and I hope that you recognize Orion uh, there in the distance. At this time, it's not really obvious in this photograph, actually. At this time, Betelgeuse, uh, the, uh, the red shoulder star of Orion, had begun to fade uh, and... Uh, uh, it, it had faded so rapidly by uh, the new year 2020 that a lot of astronomers thought it was going to go supernova. Thankfully, it recovered in brightness uh, after February. And uh, by the time I think late March came around, it was back to normal. 
there's a, a, a tomb for one of the many, one of the 18 satellite mounds at Mouth, again taken during this uh, star watching uh, 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 evening. Uh, and this is Venus, the evening star. This is a, uh, this, uh, this was taken in March. Venus had a long apparition in the evening sky uh, this spring. As you all know, it me it reached its maximum eastern elongation from the sun uh, in in March, uh, and uh, was visible in the evening sky for six or, or months or longer. And of course, the moon. And uh, again, this involved a long exposure photograph. And I I walked towards the mound uh, and lit it with torches while walking around it. But I had to keep the torches uh, hidden from the camera, so I got my back to the camera. And actually. It's not immediately noticeable, but if you study this photograph really carefully, you will see a couple of ghostly shadows here. And that is it's it's almost unavoidable when you're walking between the subject and yourself and you're creating light that you will appear as a shadow in that image. Oh, man, this is one of the most magical photographs I've ever captured. I was at Nouth last uh, October. Uh, I was there to try and capture this scene uh, because this is the time... Uh, this was captured on the 13th of October, uh, as you can see at sunset. This is the time when the sun is actually shining into uh, uh, Nouth's Western Passage uh, uh, at, at its longest reach. Not at the time of equinox, as has been often stated, the Western Passage of Nouth is aligned some distance to the south of east, uh, west, uh, which means that the sun shines in there, uh, what is it, uh, about 20 days i'm just uh, approximately before spring equinox and 20 days after autumn equinox anyway i was there uh, and um, i was there with somebody from the opw and the clouds came in and it was raining heavily and the uh, opw lady that i was with said uh, you know we're not going to see the sunset unfortunately it's cloudy you know and i said i don't know i don't know i don't know because if you get showery days you know that uh, things can change and gaps can appear. And just at the last moment, uh, the sun appeared. I was in, you can see, this is the this is the curbstone in front of the entrance. And this is the decorated quartz and, and uh, granite cobble entrance area outside the western entr uh, entrance of Mouth. This is, uh, is a very large boulder. And of course, this is a standing stone of, of uh, a polished sandstone standing stone which some people have described as a gnomon or a standing stone that casts shadows onto the curbstone as the sun sets but it just turned into the most powerfully magical moment because the sun was illuminating uh, the the underbelly of this angry dark cloud with this lovely golden light uh, and at the same time i also had to again uh, there are two separate flashes on the ground here uh, one for each stone, illuminating those stones. So it all came together perfectly for this uh, very memorable image. Uh, not megaliths, but uh, I do landscape photography. I, I do take photographs other than megaliths quite often, actually. Uh, this is a train passing over the Nanny Viaduct at uh, Laytown in County Mead, which is not too far from Drogheda. It's only about five or six miles from Drogheda. Uh, and that's a very busy railway line connecting Dublin with Drogheda. And the Enterprise trains uh, connecting Dublin with Belfast pass over there with a lot of commuter traffic as well. Long exposure photograph. I think that was taken with the D3X, uh, uh, which is a fabulous camera for capturing this kind of detail. Anyway, we're getting towards the end. I hope this is Leo Foyle, the Stone of Destiny on top of the Fora or the, the Royal Seat at Tara. Uh, at a sunset, and that was captured uh, in late April in 2017. Another similar photograph uh, taken in August 2018, uh, sunset, and I've lit up the stone this time. In this image, it's kind of in silhouette. In this image, I've lit up, again, off camera here, uh, set up uh, remotely is a flash that is probably sitting on the ground. Uh, so the flash trig is triggered to, to go off at precisely the moment I take the photograph. Uh, and of course, uh, you know, I have to adjust the shutter speed and the aperture uh, to make sure that the background's in focus as well as the foreground. Uh, and also to make sure that everything is fairly evenly lit because the danger is that either this will burn out and be too bright and maybe the sun might be too bright as well or that there isn't enough light and you have to adjust accordingly. This is a drone shot. Uh, taken in uh, February 2018 of the Cairns at Loch Crew. And as you can see, it had been snowing, but 
uh, the, 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 the snow sort of in the lowlands uh, down at sea level and, and up to a few hundred feet, the snow had melted. But on top of the hills, which are that much higher, uh, the snow was still there. This is Cairn T or the aforementioned Hags Cairn with the Equinox alignment. Cairn S, Cairn T, Cairn U, Cairn V. And over here is um, uh, uh, um, 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 oh, jeez. Schlieve Rua, or also known as um, Carrig Brack, and uh, towards the far end of the image is uh, Cairn Bawn, or Cairn Ban West, the westernmost hill. Uh, and this is, uh, yeah, really, really well worth the effort having having driven there. This is taken, I think, the same day, yes, uh, but from the ground. And this is Cairn uh, W, uh, sorry, Cairn V, the ruins of Cairn V, with a uh, uh, Cairn T in the background and the setting sun with this halo around it, these ice crystals uh, forming a halo around the sun. This is Mellifont Abbey, close to Drogheda here in County Louth. Uh, the Cistercian uh, Abbey, founded in the 1140s, 1142 by St. Malachy. And of course, the Cistercians became very uh, powerful in terms of land ownership. And they were the ones who gave Newgrange the name that we have on it today. It's previously known as she she Sheedenbroga or she Machanog. Uh, it became known as the New Grange because the Cistercians owned a lot of the farmland in the area and established their granges or farms. Again, this involved quite a lot of running around. Actually, this is a long exposure, as you can see from the movement in the clouds. Uh, probably a, a minute or two minutes. I had to first of all stand off uh, outside of the image here to illuminate the uh, the arches here and then separately to walk around carefully because it's in the dark and uh, uh, use flash to illuminate the lavabo or the washroom um and uh, quite a little bit quite a bit of work involved in that and unfortunately there is i could i couldn't avoid it there is one strobe one flash uh, visible here as you can see pointing towards the camera uh, this color of the sky here unfortunately is due to light pollution from the town of Drogheda. That's not a natural effect. Uh, speaking of light pollution and Drogheda, here is the aforementioned Mill Mount. Uh, this was taken actually uh, last winter in December, and it was a sort of a misty night, but it wasn't a heavy fog. But you can see how much the, the light from the flood lighting of the Martello Tower of Mill Mount reaches into the sky when the fog uh, is, is hanging around. Another shot of Mill Mount uh, with a not a, a fabulously illuminated uh, rainbow, but nonetheless, it was one of those evenings where it, it, it was raining, one of those showers and the dark clouds hanging around. And just at the last moment, the sun appeared low in the west and formed a rainbow over Mill Mount. I'm pretty sure this is a composite of or a, a panoramic shot, which is features two images stitched together. So very quickly, I took one and turned and an overlap and take a second and join the two together. Uh, I think I mentioned this on the other night, Millmount uh, taken in uh, early May of this year uh, during the lockdown uh, when May uh, when uh, Millmount was still within my two kilometres so I could go over there and I just caught this view of the sun uh, peeping out over the top of the tower. And Millmount, one of only two uh, uh, megalithic, possible megalithic monuments. The jury is out about the age of Millmount but one of only two possible prehistoric burial mounds uh, around which there is a road, one of which is in, I think it's Abbey Quarter in Sligo. And the swans doing their thing on the Boyne River with Mill Mount in the background, again taken uh, just a couple of months ago in, in April. The swan was beating its wings. It just goes to show you the dominant view that Mill Mount has of the river, you know. And this is, oh, you won't, uh, I don't think the resolution is good enough here. You should be able to see... Uh, uh, I can't even see it on the screen. It's so small. Venus and Mercury and the Moon, a rare triple conjunction over Drada, taken from Millmount. This is another of those shots from Nouth. Uh, take, this one was taken in f February of this year. Uh, uh, the Moon, you might notice, is actually in the hand of Orion. We, we were speaking about that the other night, about Amergin carrying the, the sun uh, and the you know our Orion possibly being the controller of the planets as they cross the Milky Way, but uh, you'll notice in the foreground the lighting. Well, again, this is uh, art artificial lighting uh, uh, 
I set the camera on a tripod, long exposure, and I walked over here uh, with my back to the camera uh, with a torch in hand, lighting up the uh, curb stones of the satellite mounds here. Uh, the moon rising out of the sea uh, at Mornington uh, that was taken a couple of years ago. And you can see at moonrise how compressed the moon is and how because it's traveling through much more a more more compressed atmosphere because you're looking at it you know that the atmosphere is this thin when you're looking straight up but if you're looking uh, towards the horizon you're looking through a, a much greater wedge of apps of uh, the atmosphere i think i showed this one the other night too this is the moon uh, in its crescent phase overexposed to show you what we call the earth shine and the dark side of the moon being illuminated by that part of the earth uh, which is lit by the sun so the sun's light bouncing off the earth and illuminating the dark side of the moon this is again mound b uh, the Douglas mound uh, down along uh, the floodplain close to the Boyne, uh, uh, on a very uh, misty ethereal morning uh, one of those times when it's just wonderful to have a drone and and uh, very rewarding to have put it up into the air uh, this was taken um uh, in in early March uh, this year, uh, and I think I showed uh, a variant of this the other night, a wider view of this, uh, and this curtain of rain. It uh, it was actually probably still raining when I took this shot, but the sun appeared beneath the cloud and provided magical uh, lighting conditions. Uh, and you'll see that the you may those of you who know this area will know that uh, the river has burst its banks here. The Boyne is much wider than it would be normally, and you can see the curtains of rain falling uh, this is monaster voice uh founded in the sixth century by saint buiha uh, but this is the most this is described as the best example of an irish high cross uh, in the country uh, monaster voice is located close to me here it's only a few miles north of drahada here only takes me about 10 or 15 about 15 minutes to get there in the car uh, uh, and uh, biblical scenes carved into the cross into sandstone this stone dating from uh, probably the 10th slash uh, 11th century, named after the abbot of the time, Muradach, and the round tower in the background, and another, and, uh, another high cross here, which is part of a much more recent uh, grave. Uh, but again, this involves lighting, and again, long exposure photography, wide angle lens, uh, and uh, uh, painting with light with a torch, I think, rather than with a flash, I think, in this case, yeah, to create that more even light, uh, moving the torch light up and down to create this light. And again, you can see the lovely uh, colour complements. It's not quite as yellow as some of the earlier uh, uh, photographs of Isle de Mirren, uh, but the yellow providing, the pale yellow providing a lovely uh, colour complement to the blues, the deep blues of the sky. And again, uh, Mount B, uh, this time taken from the ground on the southern side of the Boyne. You'll see the, the, the Boyne River here in the photograph. Uh, and this is an evening photograph, an evening twilight uh, image from taken from September, uh, a September image. And the mist starting to rise off the land and creating, again, this fabulous atmosphere, you know. Uh, and one thinks about the Tua de Danon and the mythology uh, of the sites uh, and how, how mystical an apparition this is. And the light from Newgrange here illuminating the fog as well. Uh, casting beams down here onto the onto the fog fantastic you know uh an aerial image of newgrange showing this uh my this feature that is said to be a cursus which possibly a late neolithic monument some sort of a ceremonial avenue or walkway uh but there's a difference of opinion about that there's a house in the background here uh, and it is said that this might have been some sort of an elaborate garden feature from the house because it, when you're down here you can't see the river but when you walk up you can't what you probably can't see here quite so dramatically is is that the the land falls away quite steeply at the back of this ridge here you know Newgrange is at the top of a ridge which approximately runs in this direction and the land falls down this way in the front and and steeply towards the back um this may or may not be a neolithic feature uh, the only way we'll ever find out, of course, is by excavating it. Uh, uh, and again, one of those really nice uh, early morning shots. Uh, when, it, when, when you, you know, you convince yourself to get out of bed and get out there and bring the drone and bring the camera, you know. And again, just just uh, probably a, a number, one of a number of shots of Newgrange uh, when you just happen to be there. And, and you'll see this is the viewpoint you'll see in a lot of the live 
broad the, the live streams from Newgrange. There's a public road just here, and you look over the hedge uh, at Newgrange. But it's just sometimes that uh, nature provides the show for you, so it's worthwhile having the camera there. Uh, the sun is setting, and it's uh, lighting up the clouds. Uh, this is taken from the same place as that image there, uh, but with a zoom lens uh, and zoomed in. Uh, and it just, again, this beautiful uh, twilight shot taken in... August of 2019. And again, you'll see that the lights on the front of Newgrange actually point outwards so that uh, the light illuminating the top of the fog there, the banks of fog. Yeah, lovely. Uh, this was taken from Red Mountain, which is across the river from Newgrange, which is the hill above which the sun rises on uh, the winter solstice. Uh, and you'll just see here also the top of mouth and on YouTube, just for the YouTube viewers, top of mouth feet peeping up above the fog there uh, and i actually sat in the car that morning with the long lens a 300 mil lens um uh, uh, and the fog was completely covering the two monuments and it wasn't worth taking a photograph and i just said no anthony sit here sit here and wait 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 patience one thing you might know about fog if you've observed it as a photographer or as a farmer or someone who is out in the early mornings is it burns off after a while sometimes it can take a lot longer but if you're patient it burns off and it, it started to burn off and just uh, new grains just appeared out of the fog uh, for a, for probably 20 or 30 seconds before being enveloped again and it's just click, 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 take a few a few frames and just capture it before it gets covered again. And again, uh, one of these shots that you've made an effort to be there at the right time. The technical aspect of it isn't important. Uh, okay, it's important that you've got your exposure right. But, you know, less critical here is, for instance, ISO setting and what lens you're using. That's not quite as critical. It's about capturing the moment of being there when when the moment is right, because you could you could park at that spot on this road, and it's a public road I was parked along. You could park at this spot and and wait for hours and hours and days and days and even weeks and not capture this uh, kind of scene. Uh, this is uh, taken from uh, the grounds of Rossnery House, uh, which if you've been following the episodes. Uh, we said, is the likely location of Kletchik, which is the monument that uh, Elkmar or Elkvar was said to have gone to after he was removed from Newgrange, uh, uh, either by the Dagda or by uh, um, Angus, depending on which story you read. And of course, we read about Angus humiliating uh, Elkvar in that story, Altran Chiagavathar, which is the foster of the house of the two drinking vessels. Now, what you might not see, and it's very difficult to, to pick out, is that Newgrange is just trying to, to peep out from the fog here uh, on the horizon, just beneath the sun. And on YouTube, I'll just show you that there. That's Newgrange. Of course, in the foreground, uh, the, the flowers just made for a really beautiful scene that was captured early in the morning in, in April. Again, one of these twilight shots from Newgrange um, taken at the time of the solstice, lighting up Curbstone 52, but trying to show something of the morning glow, uh, the blue hour, as we say, that hour before sunrise and the hour after sunset, where the sky still has this deep, these deep blue hues in it, uh, which make it lovely. Uh, a drone shot of Newgrange taken in the summertime, taken on the 16th of June 2019 and as you can see just approaching the summer solstice uh, at this time last year uh six days uh, and a year ago uh, when the the sun is actually setting almost exactly opposite where it rises at winter solstice so summer sunrise is opposite winter sunset and winter sunrise and summer sunset are opposite each other uh and an, an opportunity to get that sort of rare view of the sun behind the monument. It's not that rare in fairness, you just have to be there in the summertime. Uh, this photograph we were talking about the other night, uh, I used to illustrate the blog post uh, and the episodes about the DNA findings. I was lying on the ground here uh, uh, with my legs in the chamber of Newgrange, but with my face and my head peeking, peeping out uh, into the passageway to capture this image. I'm going to move on quickly now because I'm conscious of the fact that it's an hour and a half. And it's our last daily uh, uh, live Irish mitts. 
the next episode will probably be on this day week. So uh, a little bit sad, uh, but look, it is what it is. And uh, I'm sure you'll agree we've had a great time. That's the left-hand or Western recess of Newgrange. Um, Cathy May Dayo has to go. Fulcha or, or Slauncha, uh, Cathy May, we'll see you on the next one. Sure, we'll talk to you on the Mythical Ireland community in the meantime and uh, the beautifully uh, uh, intricate carvings of spirals and not just on the rear stone but on this side stone and also this uh, carving down here on the lower part of this stone. And this is Newgrange again, uh, one of these uh, twilight shots when I'm able to use uh, the flashes to illuminate the great circle stones. Uh, and this was the first group for the solstice had just begun to arrive. You can see them moving along here. And the reason that they look shadowy is because this is a, a, a slightly long exposure and they were moving along uh, through through the shot. Uh, one of those rare opportunities to get a, a shot of New Grange up close uh, at twilight. This is the sunrise uh, on the 18th of December. Uh, so on one of the solstice mornings, the sun is standing still effectively for a week or so. Um, rising over Red Mountain and in the foreground the top of one of the Great Circle Standing Stones. And those are the Great Circle Standing Stones that you see there in front of Newgrange. This is uh, the opposite. This is Summer Solstice. Summer Solstice Sunrise at Newgrange taken from the drone. I think I showed you this, didn't I? I shared one of these uh, in in recent days. Uh, don't worry, uh, I'm, I'm not going away. I'm just we're just going to be doing live myths less regularly we're not doing them once a day we'll be doing them probably once a week to be honest but i will as i say keep trying to do uh, impromptu uh, live streams from the monuments uh, again another of those lovely uh, red sky moments uh, when the sun is setting behind newgrange and again another of the twilight shots uh, from newgrange uh, in the early morning and uh, you can actually see me in the photograph here. I couldn't conceal myself. I was trying to use flash and torch to illuminate Curbstone 52 here and couldn't avoid being in the photograph in this case. Oh, yeah. Uh, inspired by uh, Pete Glastonbury, who's a photographer in England who captures a lot of nice images uh, of the monuments of uh, England. And, uh, I think he's in Wiltshire. Uh, Pete often does this where he captures a sequence, you know, and I decided to try this to capture uh, five or six separate shots of the crescent moon as it descended over Newgrange one evening and then combine them into one uh, photograph afterwards. Uh, it's a neat trick and I've seen Pete doing it quite often to great effect. Uh, this is uh, uh, again at Solstice at Newgrange looking from the front of Newgrange out towards the sunrise uh, over the uh, the uh, or past the uh, the great circle stones. This was a misty morning, but the sun shone in. In fact, this was 2017, the first of the mornings of 2017. And I think that was the best of the mornings that year, you know. Um, a very, very uh, atmospheric morning that. This is taken in the chamber of Newgrange. Uh, 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 this is the simulated sunlight, but this was on one of the solstice mornings, the 19th of December. And you can see there that everybody's trying to get their own picture of what's going on. Uh, and stooping down in the light with the phones, uh, trying to capture their own memory of that moment. And of course, the sun had actually shone in here just a half an hour previously, you know. There's the mill mount again with a red sky. Don't need to say anything about that, really. Uh, again, just being there at the right time in the right place is often important. Uh, this is a nice atmospheric shot of the Rock of Cashel that I took uh, uh, on my way down to... Uh, see some friends in Cork a couple of years ago uh, and uh, it's always worthwhile. Uh, the ruins of Cashel are actually lit up very nicely uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, would make some, some nice um, twilight photography. Uh, again, I was at Newgrange one day and it was quite dull and I, I, I really wasn't going to take the camera out although I had it around the neck and I was just standing there going, no, it's not really a day for photography and all of a sudden I saw all the sheep uh, coming up the road uh, they had been moved from one field to another and I just stood there and set up the shot I knew they were going to come through the shot so I, I, I made sure the focus was right I took a couple of uh, empty fr or frames without the sheep in them I just made sure that everything was right and just literally waited for them to pass through and as they passed through I was clicking click 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 and I thought that this was the best of the whole lot the sheep and the lambs this was taken in April of 2017 
Yeah, the Farmer's Journal used this photograph that week and the caption on it said, because it was Easter week, the caption said, Holy Communion, <laughs> a gathering of sheep uh, at Newgrange on, uh, I think it was Holy Thursday uh, or Holy Saturday, either one or the other. Uh, but anyway, this is a, a, a drone shot of doubt showing you the aforementioned large crater left by the 1840s excavations if that's what you want to call them but the sheep had huddled down in the crater here and they actually noticed the drone even though it's not that loud it wouldn't create an awful lot of noise that's the mavic pro the small drone uh you know it wouldn't be that large and but it would be loud enough to be heard but not to create too much noise but they did notice it when i lifted when i when i brought it over to the rim of the crater and they looked over they were like oh what's going on there you know uh, and again that was one of those uh, foggy, frosty spring mornings. Yet another of the shots from this uh, 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 particular viewing point or, 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 or location on the south of the Boyne, uh, and another of those evening, autumn evening shots when I had waited around for the twilight and the mist begun to clung to the land uh, very ethereally around Dog Does Mount or Mount B with Newgrange on the top of the ridge in the, in the background. Really, really love that shot, actually. I, I love all of those shots. Uh, it's very hard for me to pick a favourite. Um, anyway, I'll keep going back and trying, trying to uh, try to capture more versions of This is taken, actually, uh, in May, uh, just last month, uh, when... The landscape had become quite parched due to a prolonged lack of rain. We've had an awful lot of rain uh, between now and then, and the, the landscape's lush and green again. Uh, but uh, you can see the henge around Mound A. This is one of the henges. And you can see the annex that I was talking about. Uh, this mimics kind of the uh, the site of uh, P, uh, the henge down here along the river uh, with the annex. But there are a lot of archaeological features. The Great Palisade is visible there at this ancient roadway a possible denuded cairn here and other features. This is the Hill of Slain, again with the drone taken on a beautifully, ethereally, mystically foggy, magically illuminated morning, uh, a December morning, a winter time, when it was absolutely, definitely well worth getting out of bed, putting the photography and drone equipment into the car and traveling out into the valley to capture this so it was still quite foggy as you can see but the sun was just starting to peep through creating this and i haven't done much to this image in terms of processing i haven't cheated with this it didn't require it uh, nature did uh, 90 percent of the work here and this is the old bell tower at slain in st patrick's uh, st patrick's church or the ruins of here in in the old cemetery uh, and the monkey puzzle tree sure where else would you see it uh, but ireland in the Hill of Slain, a monkey puzzle tree. This is also the Hill of Slain, probably the same morning, actually. Yeah, same morning, this one taken from the ground. Again, uh, nature doing 90% of the work. And I thought with the frost on the grass and the fog and the sun uh, and the headstones, it just looked magical. And uh, yeah, one of my favourite images of the, of the graveyard at the Hill of Slain. Occasionally, I do some wildlife. This is in the Phoenix Park in Dublin, where uh, those of you who have been to the Phoenix Park will know that there are lots and lots of deer uh, in the park. This is a stag who I was able to get reasonably close to. I was quite cautious, as you can imagine. I didn't want him charging me. Uh, there were no females in the immediate vicinity, so I wasn't going to approach if there are any females or juveniles close by. Uh, I think this was taken with... I'm pretty sure this was taken with the D3X with the 50mm lens on it. So exactly that camera and lens. Uh, and I got up really fairly close. And you can see that the colour contrast of this image, which again is provided by nature, uh, this is the D3X is fabulous for this. It's a, it's a great camera for capturing this, this sort of level of detail. But anyway, he, he momentarily stopped looked me in the eye after I'd taken this photograph and trotted off nonchalantly. I think I showed this one the other night. Uh, this is Standing Stone Sea uh, on, on, on one of the, overlooking one of these ridges that falls away quite dramatically here down towards the Boyne, which is in flood here. And the sun and a misty morning just providing the magic taken with the Mavic Pro, uh, I, I believe you'll, you'll, you'll find uh, quite a magical shot. And again, a, a train, uh, 
Uh, occasionally, it helps to have uh, insider knowledge. Uh, I happen to know some people uh, who, who work or who are volunteers for the Railway Preservation Society of Ireland who told me about this. This was uh, New Year's Eve at the end of 2012, the, or 2017, the last day of 2017, the 31st of December. And I was told that this train was going to be passing through Drogheda heading to Belfast, the steam train. And I had thought about going to the train station to capture images of it, but something told me something told me to go to Donors Green along the Boyne instead. And it was quite late, and it was the twilight was getting deeper and deeper and deeper. And I said, you know what? If this train is going to be so late that it's going to be dark, the picture is going to be useless. And it arrived uh, magically. The Hogwarts Express uh, arrived magically exactly at the time it was supposed to. And you'll see that extraordinarily the clouds sort of seem to sort of almost frame the image lovely because you know they they just i think they create a, a bit of interest in the upper part of the image and uh, of course capturing the train when it is fully in the central metal span the iron or the steel span of the viaduct was important you know uh, and with the twilight colors just per a perfect uh, image um this one was featured uh, in their calendar of the Royal of the Irish, sorry, the Railway Preservation Society of Ireland. And again, insider knowledge. Uh, this was taken uh, last October uh, when I knew that the steam train was going to be passing through Drogheda. And this time, I said, "You know what? It's a lovely, bright day. This is this is a drone shot now uh, with uh, the town in the background. It was a lovely, bright day that day." as the steam train puffed its way across the, the, the Boyne viaduct. There's the hill of Tara uh, taken from the drone, uh, an evening shot with the sun low in the evening. Uh, and uh, on for the royal seat, Chalk Cormac. This is Rottenery, the large enclosure around the, the, the monuments on the top of the hill. This is Don O'Neill, the Mound of the Hostages, Rotna Shannad, the Wrath of the Synods, uh, and the church here, and uh, part of the banqueting hall, Chak Mikorta, visible here. And this is, the again, the churchyard, enclosed by the trees, but this time taken from the ground and taken on a different date. And this is taken earlier this year, taken in the springtime, uh, again, just before the, the COVID lockdown. Uh, an atmospheric morning, early morning shot. Lovely to be in the uh, landscape in the early mornings and in the evenings. Uh, golden hour and blue hour are my times when I spend, uh, when I'm trying to get that magical photography. Uh, again, here's an example of blue hour shot from the hill of Tara. This is the standing one of the standing stones in the churchyard of Tara, with the shield and the gig carved into it in, in relief, standing out in relief. And of course, you'll see that this image was was lit up from the side here, either probably by flash rather than torch. I would say off camera flash. And there's another view of Tara taken in, in the springtime with the drone looking towards the east at sunrise. And you can see actually there's a fence around Duan O'Neill uh, because they're trying to uh, allow the grass to grow back because a lot of people walk on the mound during the during the daytime. There's Trim Castle, uh, the largest Norman fortified castle in Ireland. It was used in the filming of the movie Braveheart. Uh, and it is very well lit up uh, because there's a contrast of colour in the lights. The lights are a mixture of blues and yellows, which are a lovely complement to each other, as I said before. Uh, and the outer walls and the turrets and then the, the, the castle inside uh, all lit up. This was taken in June, uh, uh, June 2018, actually, uh, on some of the longest days of the year. And you see that deep blue twilight sky that lasts for ages into the evening provides just a, a gorgeous color backdrop uh, for the uh, for the uh, the castle. This was taken at uh, Ishnach uh, for the fire festival two years ago uh, and it's quite a spectacle and again uh, because the fire is lit after sunset you get these lovely photographs in in the lingering twilight there's another photograph after the great fire of Ishnak was lit this is what we should have seen at Bialtana this year uh, but the crowds were absent because of the Covid situation but they still lit the fire and they live streamed it on Facebook and YouTube, which was brilliant, enabled people all around the world to watch it. But this is the sort of spectacle that you would have expected otherwise. <clears throat> and all the people crowded around watching this uh, great fire, uh, reinstituting a very ancient uh, uh, fire, which was lit there in, in early historic times. 
Oh, yeah, this is the picture I was showing you earlier from the D3X of Venus in amongst the Pleiades uh, taken on the 4th of April this year uh, when uh, it was uh, uh, doing this thing that it only does really properly once every eight years. It's immersion amongst the stars of the Pleiades. Ah, view of the bridges of Drogheda uh, taken during the lockdown with a train crossing the bridge and you can see the busy port there. I'm going to hurry on now because I think we're nearly at the end. I hope. I think uh, it's an hour and forty nine. <laughs> a drone shot taken in the evening uh, of the the Boyne Viaduct uh, uh, with this lovely lingering twilight again. Uh, very very different to the daytime views, you know. Oh, there's the Voyager statue, which is at Laytown uh, in County Meath, and again, this is Orion. Uh, and you'd see the head of Taurus here and the Pleiades, but she's actually got the moon. It's like she's swallowing the moon. I positioned myself so that I put the, the moon. Uh, 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 it, it's a statue made from bronze, I think. Um, and I think the artist is Linda Bruckner. It's called Voyager. Uh, and uh, I, I uh, lit up uh, the statue on this side with a torch while taking a long exposure. Newgrange in the evening time at sunset in the winter time. And uh, this uh, a circle of plinths here represents the missing stones from Site Z, which was excavated at the time that Newgrange was excavated by Professor O'Kelly in the 60s and 70s. This is the yellow steeple at Trim. Uh, and you'll see, you'll see the moon in that shot at twilight. Uh, as a separate structure to the castle. Uh, part of uh, a late late medieval church. And that's the last of the photographs this evening. Hope you've enjoyed the show. Uh, thank you, Desiree, for uh, the projector, which has enabled us to have uh, very different uh, uh, views. Uh, and to, yeah, I'm enjoying this. I think this is going to work. We're going to be able to do several episodes involving presentations. And because it's so much darker now, you can see those images much clearer as well than you could at the beginning. Anyway, this is the last, as I say, of the daily episodes. Uh, thanks uh, uh, to everybody for watching. Thanks, as always, to my Mythical Ireland patrons at patreon.com forward slash Mythical Ireland. Uh, if you want to consider uh, helping the cause, please uh, consider having a look at patreon.com forward slash Mythical Ireland, which I've pasted in there as a comment beneath the videos here, um, uh, and that you might be able to uh, be rewarded as well for making a contribution. Don't forget... Uh, uh, if you're looking for Island of the Setting Sun, uh, it is available to pre-order. It uh, should be available all going well in late July, early August. Uh, and I'll also paste that in as a link. Just as a reminder uh, to those of you who want to pre-order the 2020 edition of Island of the Setting Sun. And not forgetting that if you also go into the gallery and shop uh, on the website, mythicalireland.com, a lot of the images you see tonight are available to purchase as prints from my website. If there's something that you've seen tonight that's not on the website, please do reach out in an email and say, I'd like to buy a print of this image. No problem at all. In the meantime, thanks so everyone for watching. Uh, uh, don't forget to keep washing your hands, using hand sanitizer, social distancing or phys physical distancing when you're outside and wear a mask covering your nose and your mouth when you're going out amongst people. Um, I'm not entirely sure when the next date is, but I'm, I imagine I will try to do them on Monday nights. I'll announce that in advance. Uh, so this is the last of the daily ones. For the time being, it's been great. I've really enjoyed it. 103 episodes on the trot. Wow, hasn't it been fabulous? I hope you've all enjoyed yourself too. I think you have. I've enjoyed the interaction. I've enjoyed the community that has grown up around it. I've enjoyed uh, uh, some of the lighthearted moments. Uh, there's been a couple of uh, crossed words, but nothing, uh, I think, serious. Uh, mostly we've managed to get on with each other very well. Uh, and I thank you for all of that and for the lovely compliments and sentiments. This is not the end of Live Irish Myths. This is just uh, the slowing down of the frequency of it. And as I said, all going well. Uh, there's enough uh, to talk about for many, many episodes into the future at a pace of one a week. Hope that you all uh, come back next week for the next episode. In the meantime, as I said, whenever I can, I will, of course, uh, uh, do those impromptu live broadcasts from the monuments because I know you enjoy them. The one at Newgrange on the day of summer solstice the other day, by the way, has been my most watched video ever. The la At the last count, Facebook says that 56,000 people had watched it. So there you go. I hadn't planned... 
Uh, well, I, I had announced that I would do a summer solstice uh, live stream, but I hadn't announced the, the place or the subject or the time. I haven't got a clue what we're going to talk about next week, but I will try to incorporate the projector into uh, the live streams uh, as much as possible. Um, and it's lovely to be able to see the images and talk about them while I'm talking to you so that you're not just looking at my face all the time. God help you. Uh, in the meantime, stay safe, everybody. Hope you all have a wonderful evening or a wonderful day, no matter where you are in the world. Uh, in the meantime, uh, it's been great. Uh, and what can I say? Uh, yeah, a little bit sad that we're ending the dailies. But look, it's not the end. Uh, it's probably just uh, the actual the continuing of a greater uh, or the, the beginning of a greater journey. So I'll say, as I always do, Kolosov, Ikhawa, Sláin and hopefully see you all for live Irish myths next week. But in the meantime, don't forget uh, the uh, uh, Mythical Ireland community on Facebook uh, is the place uh, where we all hang around and still talk to each other uh, most days. So don't forget to continue posting and commenting there and interacting with each other. We'll see you all next week uh, or sometime in between now and then. And a, a, a final uh, repeat of the thank you uh, to Desiree uh, for helping us uh, to do this and, and for bringing a new dimension to the Live Myths broadcasts. Uh, in the meantime, Slán everybody. Take it easy and a good night to each and every one of you.